<clears throat> Good evening and happy spring, everyone. It is March 30th, 2023, and I'd like to welcome you and to call to order the meeting of the South Brunswick Township Board of Education. Please stand now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests as discuss is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the board secretary has caused notice of this meeting, including date, time, and location, to be posted in the North uh, South Brunswick Public Library and the board office, filed with the township clerk and communicated to the Home News Tribune and the Star-Ledger. Mr. Prowski, can we have roll call, please? Mrs. Julie Ferrara? Present. Mrs. Laura Hernandez? Here. Mrs. Deepa Karthik? Here. Ms. Alicia Khan? Here. Mr. Roger Krishna? Mr. Mike Mitchell? Present. Mr. Barry Nathanson? Here. Dr. Smith of Raj? Here. Mrs. Lisa Rogers? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. And may I have a motion second to approve tonight's meeting agenda? Moved. We have. Um, second. Dr. Raj, Dr. Raj, uh, second um, move, and Mr. Mitchell first, uh, second. Thank you. I'll get the first and second straight. Okay. Next order of business is minutes of February 9th and February 23rd, 2023, for both board and executive minutes. Um, Mr. Mr. Pawelski um, sent out the draft of the minutes for both meetings on Tuesday, February 21st. Um, may I have a motion? Mr. Nathanson and Dr. Raj. Are there any corrections to the minutes distributed? None, thank you, then the minutes are approved. Next, we're going to have the report of the student representative, Ms. Rhea Krishna. Hi, good evening, everybody. This has been an extremely busy week at South Brunswick High School. Uh, just a few updates on what's going on. On March 22nd, we had the de-stress event, which was hosted by the class of 2025. On March 23rd, we had Y2K night, which was hosted by Public Health. And on March 24th, we had Hosa game night. Um, we have Spirit Week coming up with a theme of Vikings Glow All Out. On Tuesday is Adam Sandler Day, Wednesday, White Lie Wednesday, Thursday is 80s, and Friday is Blackout with Neon Accessories. Um, to add to Spirit Week this year, we are adding an assistant principal challenge where students and staff can pay $1 to place a shield on the poster of an assistant principal of their choosing that they want to see dressed as a Viking at the pep rally. On May 24th, we have Powder Puff, and we collected packets today and are super excited for the event. This past uh, this past week, the South Brunswick High School Model UN team traveled to New York City for the National High School Model United Nations Conference. The team won an award of excellence in the category of debate and simulation. Although the team won an award of merit twice in the past, this marks the highest achievement for the team in recent history. In addition, the team met with a permanent mission to the United Nations from Kazakhstan and participated in the closing ceremonies at the General Assembly. The Model UN team is advised by social studies teacher Ms. Saldana and Mr. Wasaki. Um, the Viking Do Cup Dodgeball Tournament is being held April 11th in the main gym and South Bun and SB Earth is hosting an upcycle night on April 13th. Moving on to athletics, the opening day for golf was March 23rd and opening day for all other spring sports will be April 3rd. The boys tennis team is ranked 10th in the state by NewJersey.com high school sports in its preseason rankings and second for Central Jersey Group 4. New additions, senior Ayush Kishore and sophomore Amrit Manoj Kumar are key additions to an already strong team, anchored by returning juniors Nithin Sunkar, Akash Gogate, and Chris Shah. Senior standout doubles player Aditya Ramkumar also looks to make a run in the state doubles tournament this year again. Congratulations to our senior student athletes that signed their letter of intent this March to continue their athletic careers in college. Their names are Katie Bourne for Lincoln and College Soccer, Stephanie Macaluso for Cedar Crest College Soccer, Juliana Demetrius for William Patterson University Soccer, 
Brianna Melanson for New Jersey City University for volleyball, Samantha Schneider for Fairlight Dickinson University Florham Campus for volleyball, and Allison Piscasio for Rutgers University Dance. We are very proud of their athletic and academic achievements. Lastly, upcoming home events on April 3rd, we have boys tennis versus East Brunswick, girls golf versus Mother Seton, and baseball versus East Brunswick. On the fourth, boys volleyball versus East Brunswick, fifth, girls track and field versus Piscataway, sixth, softball versus Oldbridge, and girls lacrosse versus North Brunswick. On April 10th, baseball versus WWP South, and boys volleyball versus Ridge. On the 11th, we have girls golf versus New Brunswick, boys lacrosse versus Monroe, girls lacrosse versus WWP North, and boys tennis versus Edison. On the 12th, boys track and field versus East Brunswick and Oldbridge. And then on the 13th, softball versus Lawrence, boys volleyball versus Colonia, boys lacrosse versus Sayreville. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions to our student representative, Ms. Krishma? Nope. Thank you so much for your update. Uh, next order is the report of the superintendent, Mr. Fetter. All right. Well, first, congratulations to our commended students. Welcome to their families for tonight, and we'll have you going up in a short minute. I want to make an announcement I just received. Uh, you all, if you receive the Nixle, you and you live near Hillside in 522, to all of our families, there's a, a very significant water main break. Um, obviously, I think if you live over there, you might know this already. Um, this is going to have a major impact on transportation tomorrow. We'll be putting something out to the people that are most impacted. Most impacted will be um, middle school and Brooks Crossing. <clears throat> High school students uh, may need to walk the Freedom Trail if they live in that area to get to the school, as it's going to be very hard to get buses even anywhere in an area near there to walk to a bus stop. So um, what's happening is tomorrow morning, um, our transportation department will be speaking directly to the police uh, at the front desk. They will be awaiting to hear from us and we will get all of our information as to what is possible in managing this crisis. Our transportation department already is aware of this and already considering how this might happen. I will say Dave did have a good suggestion. He suggested helicopters. So pick them up and drop them. Helicopters drop and With pick parachutes. up. Parachutes. Oh. Parachutes and helicopters. Propelling oh. down out of the <laughs> Propelling <laughs> down. Um, but the good news is our transportation department is already on this. Uh, we did receive information from the chief this, this late, late, late this afternoon, early evening, and it'll be taken care of to the best of our ability, but we do want to uh, let the board and the community know this will have an impact uh, tomorrow. So I'll put that aside, and um, we're working on that. <clears throat> um, I want to give a congratulations to our own Barry Nathanson for a moment. Um, Gary ha uh, Barry has just received a 20-year plaque from New Jersey School Boards Association from his service, which has been for since um, 1865, <laughs> um, since uh, 2002 to 2022. Wow. So congratulations, Barry. <laughs> it was the great-grandfather that was 1865. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, a date for anyone who's interested, May 4th. That's the date to hold. We are going to be uh, adding a, uh, uh, a special meeting on May 4th to do a budget adoption at that time. May 4th is a date where our final budget is due to the state, well, shortly after May 4th, but that's when the board um, will be asked to adopt a final budget for this year. I'll talk more about budget in, in, in a moment. <clears throat> I think it, it, it has to be talked about regarding um, what is unfortunately the latest shooting in a school setting in, in Nashville. Um, when this happens, um, uh, we generally will get a lot, of, a lot of interest in school security, um, arming people for the buildings, um, uh, various ways to protect the physical spots. And um, what I can say is due to the help of, you'll hear certainly from Senator Zwicker, it is possible that we'll be able to even dedicate some funds to doing something in this area. It's been very difficult funding-wise to do some of the things, but the question and the the discussion around school safety and, and um, armed officers in schools, are they armed police officers? Would they be armed security guards? Best way to do that. Um, these are all questions I want the community to know that the board will be discussing over the next month 
as we approach the budget and how to best approach this. I want to add that we'll be working directly with um, our local police. Uh, Chief Haduka and I spoke on this today, spoke on it the other day. We'll be planning on continuing these conversations. We also, for those who are unaware, um, we employ um, Jim, Con Jim Conroy, who is the former chief of police of East Brunswick School, uh, East Brunswick um, Township. He works uh, full time for us as our head of security. So we're, together, um, we're looking to see what the best options are. Um, not necessarily the most cost effective options, but the best options. What are the safe ways to approach this? What do we do with our doors? What do we do with our entrances? What do we do with armed? And there's, there's, there's always questions about that. Philosophically, what's the right thing to do? So um, just know we're, we're in these conversations. We'll continue in these conversations. And um, the, the most important thing we do, of course, is keep people safe. Um, academics, extracurriculars are all take uh, uh, a distant second to making sure everyone who comes in the day goes home safely at night. So just know that while there's no def definitive answer I can have for you today, we're looking to give our community solace in knowing that um, this is a priority for this, for this Board of Education, for this administration. And I uh, don't want to speak for you, Senator, but I know, I know for Senator Zwicker as well. And um, that's why he's one of the reasons he's fight, he fights for us the way he does. So um, I'm sure we can talk about this at length, but I, I want to share that today with our community and to share that there'll be more coming over the next month uh, as we come to a May 4th adoption of the budget and, and how that will interface into our budget, okay? Um, quick few reminders. Um, we're closed <laughs> next week and we are also closed on Monday, May 10th. Please mark that down. That was our inclement weather day. We don't do inclement weather anymore. Kind of happy about that. Um, so I'm gonna have to come up with a different reason to do a robocall, though. Oh no, you don't. Yeah, no, you don't. I do something. <laughs> no. We're off Monday, April 10th. We're off all of next week. And uh, wishing everyone a, a wonderful spring break. Hope everyone has cool plans, doing something fun, or just relaxing. Any of that is good. Um, uh, finally, uh, regarding the budget. So uh, I'm not gonna steal anyone's thunder. Don't worry. But um, uh, Senator Zwicker's here today, and he'll be speaking shortly. But um, we believe we have some very good news on the budget to share that um, comes due to the advocacy of um, school officials in the S2 districts, such as ourselves. Um, uh, Lisa has recently testified multiple times uh, in front of the Senate and the Assembly. And um, even um, our um, president of our teachers union uh, testified yesterday. I've testified a few times. And of course, we have um, local politicians fighting and uh, all trying to make sure that we maintain the funding needed to do what needs to be done for our South Brunswick families and students. So that's all in the works. I'll leave the rest of the specifics to Senator Zwicker shortly. But before I do that, I would like to turn this over for a moment to Blair, who uh, Blair Eisman is going to speak about our upcoming and the, the coolest thing we, one of the coolest things we do here is the District Art Gallery. And it's going to be, is it going to be in person? It is. Ah, uh, very good. All right. All you, Blair. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone, members of the board, those here tonight and tuning in at home. I'm Blair Eisman, Director of Programs and Professional Development, but I also have the honor of supervising art for kindergarten through eighth grade, along with Kristen Laskin, who supervises grades nine through 12. Kristen, myself, and the art teachers across the district are thrilled to invite you to the 18th annual Joanne Kirkus Student Art Gallery taking place on Tuesday, April 18th in the Annex Gym at the High School from 4 to 8 p.m. This is the first time we are back in person since the start of COVID and we couldn't be more excited. Although our virtual galleries, hopefully you got to see them over the past couple of years, were nothing short of phenomenal, there's just nothing like seeing the artwork in person. If you have never attended this event before, please do. You will be in awe at the thousands of pieces of selected artwork from students K-12 across the district on display. So to give you a little bit of a preview of the gallery and our best of the best, um, we do have a short video to show you tonight. 
Thank you to Rebecca Bufus from the high school. She's one of our art specialists there for putting together the video for you all. Again, please join us Tuesday, April 18th at the high school. Pop in anytime between 4 and 8 p.m. From 4 to 6, we call that our sneak peek because art teachers won't be there at that time to talk with and, and mingle, but they will be there between 6 and 8. So pop in at any time, and thank you, and congrats to everyone in the audience tonight. Have a good night. All right, thank you. <laughs> if you have not had a chance, to come to that, that is an exceptional display. It is truly incredible to see what they do. These art teachers and these kids, it's incredible. Um, okay, for my final thing today, I would like to call Senator Andrew Zwicker up to the podium, who would like to say a few words to our district. If we could welcome Senator Zwicker. Thank you, Senator Zwicker. Thank you, Superintendent Fetter, uh, Board President Rogers, to all the community. So uh, my name is Andrew Zwicker. I was here, uh, I guess, a couple of board meetings ago when the superintendent laid out the implications of the devastating cuts that had come unexpectedly. I uh, just want you to know, before I go into some of the things that happened today, which, as you've heard, is all good news to share. Um, thrilled as we heard some of the student reports. Uh, if you don't know this, I live here in South Brunswick. There's many reasons why I fight for this, this district and this school, but um, my own kids went here. Uh, my youngest graduated in 2018. My kids played lacrosse, boys and girls lacrosse, uh, soccer, and football. And South Brunswick is the embodiment of what a high quality public school system is supposed to be, from the best teachers, the best support personnel, administrators, board, and the students. So um, this is both my, my official duties as a legislator, but it's a labor of love to fight for this, this district, and I will continue to fight for it. So um, you know, it's good news, but I, I want to give some thanks, because this does not happen, and, and you heard a little bit of this already doesn't happen if there is not an immediate, immediate call to action. The, as you heard a couple board meetings ago, the unexpected multi-million dollar cuts that came out of the Department of Education would have resulted in cutting sports, cutting Model UN, cutting teachers, cutting support staff, cutting band. Um, I remember the PowerPoint slides that you gave. Basically, it sounded like every single program that this school is proud of was potentially on the, on the chopping blocks. That is not just true in South Brunswick, but more than 150 school districts around the state woke up a few weeks ago to find out that the budget numbers they were expecting were not the budget numbers that they were, were getting. So um, as you heard, Superintendent Fetter came and testified in front of the Senate Budget Committee, I guess last week that was, yeah. and got, not only did he give passionate 
factual testimony got into quite a, uh, what's the right word, spirited debate, uh, but an important debate with the, the chair of the Senate Budget Committee. And our board president, Rogers, came not once but twice, both to the Assembly Budget Committee hearing and to the Senate Budget Committee hearing, to fight not just for South Brunswick, but to fight for all the schools that are just like South Brunswick. So what happened today? Today, there was a joint session of both the General Assembly and the Senate where we passed legislation to restore $103 million of school funding to the state, a little under $2.7 million coming back to South Brunswick. As you heard, it's not just simply for sports or Model UN or teachers, but it goes right to school safety, which is such an important piece here. It gives this board the freedom to not only protect and keep the programs that we're so proud of, but to do the things that we hate to talk about, which is to ensure that our students and our staff are safe. Um, really, again, want to emphasize what they did because they came in and they worked incredibly hard to make this happen. The governor is committed to signing this bill on Monday, which means that the letters from the Department of Ed increasing the aid will go out within a couple of days after that, well before the May 11th <coughs> deadline that, that you have and other districts have. So I would like you, if you don't mind indulging me, not for me, but for them to give a round of applause for the work they've done. <laughs> I want to take one more minute to talk about the future, um, because that's something we talk a lot about. Because that this is good news for now, but we're on a path, we heard this with the superintendent's report from a couple budgets ago, <laughs> to where we would be in this same place and in a worse spot a year from now, if we don't do something about that. And the spirited debate that both of them got into in their testimony was not about today only, it was about the future. And this is really, really important. So we also had a budget committee hearing today where the state treasurer, Treasurer Moyo, came in front of us and I asked her very pointedly about what is going on when it comes to, without going into the total weeds, when it goes into the fair share calculation and the 2% cap that has been coming up often. And, um, you know, I asked her a lot about how could any district, this district or any other, plan when there's no certainty of any kind. And to be blunt, I did not get a satisfactory answer during that time and uh, asked quite pointedly to have this information sent to me and I will continue to follow up because it's part of the fight that we must continue to ensure that we go ahead and say that it's great for today, but we gotta make sure it's tomorrow and for next year and the year after. I am relying on you as community members to be a part of that. I'm relying on this board and our superintendent to be a part of that because this legislature also understands that time is relatively short. Next year will come around very quickly. And so the goal is to work this year to put a systemic long-term solution <clears throat> into place. And again, this team here, I'm, I'm just so glad to have you represent, my kids may be gone out of this school, but I am so glad to have each of you here. So with that, thank you for, to indulge me for, for a few minutes. Again, thanks to our superintendent, our board president, our, every single member of this board. I also have to give a big shout out to 20 years. My goodness, <laughs> Barry, 20 years? <laughs> like, are you okay? <laughs> um, but I do think that, look, Barry represents, again, part of what this community is all about, which is dedication to the students, the staff of, of our community. So I also want to say, if I may, and this one's to him, on behalf of the entire state, thank you for 20 years of okay. service. Sorry. Nice. And that's, I've taken up enough of your time. Uh, congratulations to all the art winners, uh, to all the students, and as I always say whenever we're here, let's go Vikings, so thanks.
<laughs> yeah, so, so just so you know, it, it does continue. Um, when you hear the budget presentation in May, it's, it's going to talk a lot about next year, more so than the coming year. So our seniors, they'll be gone, but it's going to talk about the 24-25 school year. That's our new, that's our new um, target that we have to address. So uh, we're, we're meeting with um, one of Senators Wicker's co-sponsors of the bill, uh, Vin Gopal, Senator Gopal, out of Monmouth County. We're meeting with him on Monday. And uh, we're just going to keep going. We have to keep going. So we look at the next nine months of advocacy as vitally important to the South Brunswick community. And uh, my colleagues in other districts are in the same boat. Some of them are worse situation than even we are. But next year is, is, is scary if, if things don't change. So again, thank you, Senator Zwicker, for realizing what has to be done here for, for us and other districts and for your advocacy. Senator Zwicker is being shy and, and not saying he sponsored the Senate bill along with uh, Vin Gopal to um, restore this $103 million. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Senator Swicker. I also just want to give a shout out to the people um, that actually were part of the advocacy. It wasn't just uh, Superintendent, Super, Superintendent Federer, myself, or the board. There was many parents out there that when we sent out the message on uh, social media to a call to action, as we call it, many of you responded and made phone calls to the senators and to the assembly uh, budget committee members. So I just wanted to shout out a big thank you for stepping up and doing that. And as we said earlier, we're not done yet. So that call to action is will be coming again. So again, thank you for those that did step up. Appreciate it. OK, we will move on. Um, next, we have two recognitions this, um, this evening. The first uh, is regarding our athletics program. Uh, I'd like to now call up uh, Mr. C.J. Hendricks, to the Director of Athletics for the Middle and the High School. And he's going to be recognizing our high school winter athletics. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Madam President and the Board of Education, District Leadership, Superintendent Fetter, for allowing me to be here today to uh, represent and um, acknowledge our winter sports athletes. Um, this was a very exciting season for us. Um, you know, I, I have to first say thank you so much to my team um, in the athletic department, Miss uh, Kim Ryan and Kathy Ahern, who really help everything go uh, every single day and keep us moving in the right direction um, for, the, for the sake of our, our student athletes. Um, right now, I'd like to call up our student athletes who are present today. Please come on up. Um, as I said, it was an exciting season. A lot of, probably one of my favorite seasons to watch because of how enjoyable it is to see our kids compete at a high level. Um, I am very excited to get back outside now that the, the weather is turning. Um, but uh, you know, we're very, very looking, very much looking forward to uh, our spring sports season, which you'll you'll hear more about as we move on to the board meetings. But tonight, I want to acknowledge a couple standout student athletes that our coaching staff uh, nominated to be here today to represent their teams. Uh, first, for boys basketball, Mr. Harmahar Chabra. Next up, girls wrestler Rose Pavley. <laughs> Representing boys wrestling, Mickey Carilla. <laughs> Representing our national finalists and nationally ranked dance team, Ariana Carbone. Getting double recognition today, Trisha Verma, representing swimming. <laughs> representing our girls indoor track team, Miss Michaela Walker. Congratulations. Representing our girls bowling team, Mega Talanayar. and representing our boys bowling team, Mr. 300, Julian Vasquez. Some of our uh, representatives who couldn't be here tonight, representing ice hockey, Mr. Brody Jenny. Representing girls basketball, Ms. Leilani Pinder. 
and representing our uh, boys winter track team, Nicholas Johnson. And the final representative that I have to recognize is Ms. Lauren Hernandez, who's representing our cheerleading team. Um, another round of applause to our student athletes. Uh, one of the, the greatest parts of my job is to be able to watch such the, the amazing things that these young people do, not just on the fields, on the court, on the mats, but also in the classrooms and out in the community. Um, you know, we can't be any more proud of the job that they do. I think a lot of people look at sports as what they accomplish, you know, out on the playing field, but to see them walk through the hallways, represent our school with such character and such grace and humility and with such pride, as we say Viking pride every day, is, uh, is nothing short of amazing. So thank you all for the job that you've done throughout your careers here, and we appreciate you. <laughs> now I'd, uh, you guys can uh, be seated, and I'd like to... I guess roll into our video, our winter highlight video, which will be premiering right now for the first time. Um, excited for you to enjoy this. Uh, we collaborate with a South Brunswick High School alumni, alumnus, um, Thomas Pressey, that helps us put this together. Um, again, very happy that our student athletes and the people that are in our programs come back and want to contribute and help to uh, provide you know services like this. So enjoy the show. I don't know if the board would like to come up and sit in the front, or you can see it from there. Thank you. What's up, Vikings? This is Mr. Hendricks, Athletic Director at South Brunswick High School. I'm very excited to share with you some of our winter highlights from the 2022-2023 winter season. We had a lot of really exciting things that happened in our athletic program this year, a lot of milestones that were reached, and a great success by all of our teams. You'll see in this video how exciting this winter sports season was, and we appreciate all your continued support at all our athletic events. Let's go, Vikings.
Thank you so much for watching our winter highlight video. Hope that you enjoyed it. I want to thank all of our student athletes, our coaching staff, our support staff here at South Brunswick High School, athletic trainers, nurses, custodial staff that help make our sports season so successful. Our kids work really hard to make sure that they do the absolute best that they can in every sporting event, and they also make sure that they represent South Brunswick High School both here on campus and out in the community. Thank you for all your support, and go Vikings. Thank you again for your continued support, and I turn it back to Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Hendricks. That was awesome. I, I so enjoy. I know the board enjoys it too. Watching those videos, there's nothing like um, high school sports because there's so much passion, and you could see it in their faces. Um, so congratulations to each and every one of you, and those that are moving on to college sports. All the best of luck to you. But I just want to know what your parents feed you because you are so tall. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations to you all. Okay, uh, next uh, presentation, or excuse me, recognition, I'm going to call Mr. Varela to the podium, the principal of the high school, for the second part of our 2023 National Merit Commended Student Scholars. You will recall back on March 9th, we recognized the first half of these commended students. We congratulate these students, as well as their parents, uh, for this accomplishment, along with the honorees. Mr. Morell, it's all yours. Thank you, Mrs. Rogers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight, it's the third opportunity to honor students for their stellar performance on the PSAT, which is also the qualifying test for the National Merit Scholarship Program. Being recognized by the National Merit Organization is truly one of the most prestigious honors for high school students each year. Now, to refresh our collective memories, I'd like to provide you with a little background about these honors. Each, each year, the National Merit Scholarship Program recognizes the 50,000 members of each graduating class with the highest scores in the PSAT as either semifinals or commended students. Tonight, we are honoring the second half of the 66 commended students that we have at SBHS. Keeping with our practice, we invited our students to honor teachers who have made a significant impact on their lives. Each student was asked to write a short personal letter or message to each faculty member. And tonight, each teacher will receive a framed letter. An additional honorees will receive a certificate of accomplishment from Board President Lisa Rogers and the Board of Education. So at this time, Mrs. Rogers, would you please join me? Before I begin, I'd like to thank high school art teacher, Ms. Rebecca Bufus, for selecting a piece of artwork that Kaniz Akhtar, a freshman visual arts student at SBHS, created for us. I'd also like to thank Ms. Ramona Baker and Ms. Murphy for their assistance tonight. So at this time, I'd like to ask the first row to please stand. I see we're missing a good number of students, and um, I'm wondering if this uh, main had any effect on that. So hopefully they can join us at some point. So as we start our program, I thought I'd share some of the colleges and, uni and universities that our committed <coughs> students apply to for admission. So here's some of the schools that they apply to. And here are some of the schools that they've been accepted to. All right. The first six names I'll read to you tonight could not be with us tonight, um, but I'd like to recognize them publicly. Um, so please hold your applause. Anakit Despande, um, he's planning to major in physics. 
he would be honoring Joshua Oldham, a member of the high school music department. Saidip Kasapathy, who will be majoring in computer science, he would be honoring James Nobles, a member of the high school English department. Sattvic Modem, he'll be majoring in finance, and he would have honored Kenneth Sadowski, a member of the high school science department. Kenneth Yan, who will be majoring in economics, uh, he would be honoring Annette Galera, a member of the high school business department. Muhammad Youssef, he'd be majoring in, he will be majoring in computer science, and he is honoring Austin Maitland, a member of the high school business department, and Sarah Zunaid. Uh, she will be majoring in engineering, and she uh, would like to honor Jessica Pagone, a member of the high school guidance department. So please join me in a round of applause for them. Okay, so our first honoree tonight in person is Pranav Boka. Come on up, Pranav. Pranav will be majoring in aerospace engineering. Tonight, he'd be honoring Thomas Fawcett, a member of the high school tech department who cannot be with us tonight. You can give that to him. Congratulations. Okay. All right, our next student cannot be with us, Aditri Gudiji. Uh, he plans on majoring in bioinformatics. And tonight, he'd like to honor Mr. Stephen Dentler, a member of the high school math department. Okay. Our next honoree is uh, Natish Raj. This upcoming fall, he plans to major in data science. And tonight, he's honoring Mr. Gordon Barnes, a member of the high school math department. Okay, our next honoree is Ranjith Rujeshram. He's planning on majoring in computer science, and tonight he's honoring Mr. Peter Honig, a member of the high school English department. Our next honoree cannot be with us tonight. I'd like to recognize Swetha Rama Yamahu. Uh, she's planning on majoring in molecular biology, and she would be honoring Ms. Beth McGinley, a member of the high school social studies department. <laughs> next person could not be with us also, uh, Unsh Rana. He's planning on majoring in computer science, and he'd be honoring Mark Babbage, a member of the high school social studies department. It's here for Unsh, thank you. All right, let's recognize Vincent Sanfidelli. <laughs> Vincent will be majoring in political science. Tonight he's honoring Samantha Saldana Kuncharam, a member of the high school social studies department. <laughs> Our next honoree tonight is Srinesh Selvaraj. He will be majoring in computer science, and tonight he's honoring Alyssa Silcox, a member of the Crossroads South, South Language Arts Department who could not be with us tonight. Okay, Our next honoree is Raghav Sentil Kumar. He will be majoring in computer science in the fall, and tonight he's honoring Alexandria Robles, a member of the high school math department. Our next honoree is Mohit Shah. In the fall, he'll be majoring in computer engineering. Tonight, he's honoring Danielle Rauder, a member of the high school science department. Our next honoree is Nihar Shah, who unfortunately cannot be with us tonight. So um, Nihar will be majoring in computer science but his teacher is here tonight, honoring Matthew Kostovny, a member of the high school world language department. Uh, that's okay, let's go. All right, our next honoree is Rashab Sheth.
Hershaw will be majoring in computer science, and tonight he is honoring Christopher Haver, a member of the high school math department who could not be with us tonight. Okay. Our next honoree is Ayush Singh. I usually be majoring in computer science, and tonight he's honoring Stephen Trainer, a member of the high school math department. All right, come on down. Our next honoree is Naman so um, Sodani. I'm sorry. Numan will be majoring in electrical engineering. Tonight he's honoring Mr. Aaron Millman, a member of the high school guidance department. Our next honoree tonight is Neha Sodi. She will be majoring in public health. Tonight she's honoring Stephanie Marchetti, a member of the high school English department. Our next honoree is Nisha Sodi. She will be majoring in community and global health. Tonight she's honoring an Andre Haller, a member of the high school English department who could not be with us tonight. Okay. Our next honoree is Samyatha Srinivasan. She will be majoring in computer science, and tonight she's honoring Holly Stazinski, a member of the high school science department. <laughs> Our next honoree is Kriti Sundaresa. <laughs> she will be majoring in data science and economics. Tonight she's honoring Alicia Hicks, a member of the high school world language department. Picture time. All right, our next honoree is um, Tina Tai. <laughs> this upcoming fall, she'll be majoring in computer science, and tonight she's honoring Carol Romero, a member of the high school math department. <laughs> our next honoree is Krishnan Tholkapian. <laughs> He'll be majoring in computer science. And tonight he's honoring Amel Gobriel, a member of the high school world language department. Our next honoree is Sharvani Vadlamani, who cannot be with us tonight. She'll be majoring in electrical engineering, and she would like to honor Danielle Servilio, a member of the Crossroads North Science Department. Let's hear it for Sharvani. Our next honoree tonight is Sathvik Vejenla. <laughs> Sathvik will be majoring in computer science. Tonight he's honoring Robert Matheson, a member of Crossroads North Math Department who cannot be with us tonight. Okay. Our next honoree is not here, Shreya Venkateswaran. She'll be majoring in computer science. Tonight, she would like to honor Mr. Stephen Schiff, a member of the high school math department. Okay. Our next honoree tonight is Trisha Verma. This upcoming fall, Trisha will be majoring in pre-med. Tonight, she's honoring Tara Lynn Berniston, a member of the high school uh, math department. <laughs> she probably knows another language, I'm not sure. Our next honoree is Praveen uh, Vijay Kumar. <laughs> Praveen will be majoring in co uh, computational biology. Tonight he's honoring Mark Chelio, a member of the Crossroads North Mathemat Mathematics Department. <laughs> Our next honoree is Rachel Wang. She will be majoring in English. Tonight, she is honoring T.J. Brungard, a member of the high school music department who could not be with us tonight. 
Our next honoree is Jonathan Xavier. <laughs> this upcoming fall, he'll be majoring in finance. Tonight, he's honoring Karen Hunt, a member of the high school business department. <laughs> and last but not least, Redima Yalaka. <laughs> she will be majoring in biotechnology. Tonight, she's honoring Monique Ligori, a member of the high school English department who could not be with us tonight. To conclude my presentation, I'd like to now share with you a few quotations directly from the letters and messages that were written to our staff members. So students wrote, you were always easy to approach and get advice from dealing with problems, whether it was related to math or life. Your actions as an educator have left a profound impact on me, not only as a student, but also as a person. Once again, thank you for your support and continuous words of encouragement that kept me motivated every step of the way. Thank you so much for creating a welcoming classroom environment that encouraged me to learn more about the world around me through literature. And finally, as a student who was worried and lost in a storm of college, you served as a beacon that helped me find my way to shore and I am deeply grateful for this. Faculty, our students are proud to call you their teachers and know that you do make a difference each and every day. Another group that makes a difference each day is our parent group. I'd like to honor our students' parents tonight for their hard work and support. Here are some slides recognizing all of them. Parents, at this time, I'd like to ask you to stand and be recognized. There you go. And finally, we have a truly talented group of students. It's important to note that our honorees aren't just high achievers when it comes to the PSAT. They are effective leaders, talented musicians and artists, accomplished athletes, and much, much more. Again, uh, congratulations to our commended students, their honored teachers, and their parents. And as I turn the microphone back over to President Rogers, please join me in one more round of applause for them. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Varela. And once again, on behalf of the South Brunswick Board of Education, congratulations to each and every one of these students. Uh, you work really hard, and to the teachers as well to, for supporting them, and to the parents. Um, you should be so proud of them, and I'm sure that many of you are uh, getting chills as you take those pictures. Um, they've done an amazing job, and uh, I wish them all the best. On behalf of the board, we wish them all the best in their future education. Congratulations again. If you would like to stay, <laughs> you're more than happy to hear about our audit report. <laughs> but if you'd like to go, we'll take a minute or two to let you out. <laughs> it's so exciting. Hey, when did you become a cheerleader?
and, uh, and we'll move on. Um, so on the agenda tonight, we have one final thing. Oh, Thank you, quick announcement. Sure, absolutely. I'm sorry. Just to families watching, we have sent out an email in regards to um, some issues regarding the busing for tomorrow morning. So uh, if you live near the water main break, please check your email for instructions. If anything changes between this uh, communication that we've just sent out and tomorrow morning, you'll hear from us again by then. Thank you. Okay, um, we do have the presentation this evening, um, Mr. Paul Fre Frida or Freda? Frida. Frida. Okay, uh, from Supley. That's wrong. That's Supply from Clooney. Supley. Yeah, it is right. Supley. I did have it right. Supley Clooney and Company for the presentation on the 2020. I'm sorry, 2122 audit. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Good evening. As you said, my name is Paul Frida. I'm from Supley Clooney and Company. Uh, we recently completed your 2022 audit, and we've issued two separate reports. I, I see you have copies of them. Uh, I'd like to talk about the small one first. It's the auditor's management report. Uh, this is required by the Department of Education, and it outlines the different areas of compliance that we audit. Uh, those areas include payroll, uh, the records of the board secretary and treasurer, purchasing, food service, student activities, uh, basically all of your accounts. Uh, it's a small report. Uh, but it, it encompasses about 90% of the testing that we look at. Um, you know, we had a lot of grants this year uh, was a, you know, with the uh, ARA money and everything like that, and uh, that was a, a big focus of, of the audit this year. Um, if there were any recommendations for the report, they would be in here. Uh, I'm happy to report that uh, there are no recommendations in this year's audit. Uh, the second report is the... Um, annual comprehensive financial report. It encompasses the district's financial statements and our opinion on those statements. You did receive an unmodified opinion, which means that your financial statements are presented fairly in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Um, there are a lot of schedules in here. Um, it, it shows your uh, the finances as a district as a whole by fund, and then in the back of the report there are more detailed schedules and that's what I'd kind of like you to look at right now is the Exhibit C1, which acts as a um, almost like a profit and loss statement. It shows the budgeted expenditures and revenues against what actually happened. So it, it, it starts off with your beginning fund balance, gets you to your ending fund balance, and it shows you how you got there. Um, so you did end the school year with uh, the June 30th, 2022 school year with $29, $29 million in surplus, all right? That's uh, broken into different components. Uh, you had restricted funds for capital, maintenance, and emergency reserves of $7.5 million. There were encumbrances, which are orders that were placed prior to June 30th, where the items had not come in yet, um, and that money is reserved, and that's $6.7 million. In your 2022-23 budget, you utilized $4.698 million, and there was an excess surplus calculation which determined that uh, for your 23-24 budget year, you would need to use at least $2,488,000. Uh, I, I saw your last meeting where you uh, went over the budget, and I see that you're using uh, close to the amount that was used last year which means that you're gonna be in compliance with what the state requires you to do as far as fund balance. Um, there was also uh, a small, a small uh, unemployment reserve of $524,000, and the last piece of the $29 million is $7,348,000, which represents the 4% that the state allows you to maintain in your fund balance. Um, and you will be utilizing some of that $7,400,000 to make up the difference between the four million six that you used in the current year and the two million four of excess surplus that you're required to use. Are, are there any questions uh, with either of the reports or anything with the audit process that I can answer? Any questions by board members? Administration? No questions? Okay. Just to reemphasize, this is four twenty one twenty two. I'm sorry? This is for the year 21-22. Correct. And, and it does not contain any information around the new preschool program. Correct. I just want to make sure people correct. understand yeah. that. The, the, the audit was for the year ended June 30th, 
mm -hmm. 2022. Any questions? No questions? Very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate your attendance tonight. Well, thank you. I'd just like to thank uh, Dave and his office for, uh, you know, getting us all the records that we need in a timely fashion. It makes the audit process a lot go a lot quicker, a lot smoother. And we can, you know, be off site a little, a little bit more. Well, right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So just so the board knows, the the um, the process of, of yeah. this budget. It, it'll be for it'll be a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give Dave some kudos. Thank you as well. Mm -hmm. yep, um, is uh, when you get no no audit recommendations, uh, you know not not that does not happen every time. But I think um, it's always happened every year that David's been here. And um, if you think of managing this amount of money with the various funds and the grants and all of the chaos of of, of a school district. To have no audit, to have no audit recommendations, and to be balancing these budgets and to be managing this, you know, I don't. We say this a lot, but we've lost millions and millions of dollars in state aid, and every year we are in a deficit model to begin with, with two percent cap. Yet, as I say, we have not made one cut to a program. We have not reduced or increased class size to astronomical numbers, or even much at all. This is really due to what goes on to get that audit done, which is all the work that Dave does in his office. So, Dave, thank you, sir. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, and I'll just I'll just reiterate, like I do every year, the the staff in the business office does an amazing job. Mm -hmm. And Paul walked out a little early, but I have to tell you, anytime Scott comes to us with an idea, we always run it by Paul first. Um, oh. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> Uh, we, we stay in con we stay in compliance because of the relationship we have with our auditors they help us as much as we help them uh, complete the audit they help us and they work with us to help um, make things happen for the students in South Brunswick when I met with them in the beginning years I told them I said I'm a, I'm a business administrator that makes sure that kids come first and that we build project or build build budgets for students. And uh, that's what my office does. Um, Kelly, Kim, Stephen Corso, Marcia, uh, Diane Copeland, we all, we all work together um, to make sure that everything gets done for the students. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's, a, that's an admirable, admirable position for a business administrator's office. And you don't see a lot of business administrator offices operate that way. So a lot of numbers, a lot of just balance budgets, balance budgets, and we look at it as in what's best for kids and then we balance budgets around that. So my office does a wonderful job. Yes, they do. Yep. I have a question yeah. though, Dave. Mm -hmm. When does this start? When does the process start that you have to work with the uh, for the audit? Our, audit, our auditing process starts, um, most, most of the time they start around August. And when does yeah. it usually end? Other than not uh, not with the printing. Of they this. usually end probably right around uh, January. Yeah. So yeah. you know you're working from August to January on this, mm -hmm. and then you get to kick in on the budget. Mm -hmm. So um, you will have lots of numbers. We um, do but, a lot. Uh, can you please extend our thanks from Absolutely. the board of ed to your staff because you really do a great job, and we it's greatly appreciated. And also, also if anybody's not going to yeah. uh, work with your books or enjoy your books for the reading pleasure that they are, I, I have a box that. here. <laughs> I take them home. I have one copy for my nightstand. I have one yeah. copy for my office. I have one copy for, you know, my garage when I'm out there with nothing yeah. to do. I, I sit down and read exciting. my staff. Well, I know Dr. Raj hasn't given hers up yet. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, our next order is to hear the reports of the committees and the board liaisons. Will the Education Committee report? Um, the Education Committee uh, met twice since the last board meeting. Uh, we met on March 20, 23rd, um, and we also met today. Um, today in attendance were um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Deepa Karthik, Mrs. Laura Hernandez, uh, Mr. Rafael Morales, um, Mrs. Suzanne uh, Lockburn, and uh, Mr. Feder. Um, on both the days, uh, the committee um, was briefed. Uh, the first day, uh, the committee was briefed on uh, ways for the district to continue um, the district's mission and goal to ensure all students um, access uh, for an uh, equitable and uh, efficient and rigorous uh, curriculum. Um, education, essentially. Uh, 
um, especially given the challenges going forward, um, it becomes very critical. So there was a lot of ideas thrown around. Uh, today, uh, the ideas were further explored. There were a lot of um, questions um, uh, asked, and um, the uh, committee members received a lot of answers. Um, more details and uh, detail, detailed minutes will be made available um, uh, in, in the very near future. Very Thank good. you. Any questions for education? No? Okay, education report will be filed. Next is business operations report, Mr. Nathanson. Uh, we we haven't had a meeting, but I have a legislative uh, issue that I want to uh, uh, bring uh, to the board. You want me to do it now? Sure. Okay. So, as a member of the New Jersey School Board uh, uh, Legislative Committee, uh, it was brought to my attention that uh, joint efforts between uh, our own Lisa Rogers and South Brunswick with the uh, uh, cooperation of Anna Palazzo, who is a school board member in Thomas River, uh, got together and uh, have successfully pushed the New Jersey School Board Association into supporting the concept of Increasing the budget cap. Uh, <clears throat> it's a very, as you know, you've heard uh, Mr. Feder and Mrs. Rogers talk about it. They both mentioned it in their uh, at their hearing uh, testimony that a long a part and parcel, and along with uh, increasing the amount. Uh, school districts get and coming up with a, a formula that we understand and we can actually use and David could go oh here's the formula and we plug in our numbers and we know actually what we get the following year which is an amazing concept uh, along with that we need to increase the cap the cap is not realistic at 2% uh, you know from your own uh, grocery shopping that uh, things have gone up way more than 2%. Uh, so uh, they've gotten together. The support came uh, in the last couple of days uh, through John, Jonathan Pushman, who leads the uh, legislative part of the New Jersey School Board Association. Uh, the New Jersey School Board Association believes in the concept of budget caps and spending growth limitations and believes budget caps, spending growth uh, limitations should be made more responsive to what is actually happening in the economy while at the same time permitting districts to keep pace with the increase in fixed costs over which they have little control. In instances where districts cannot meet their local share per the state funding formula, those districts may be allowed to exceed the statutory level caps to meet uh, the local share. Uh, Lisa, I believe this is going to go on the next uh, uh, legislative legislative agenda. Uh, uh, the committee, the legislative committee at NJSB. Correct. And then we're going to recommend to the uh, the entire New Jersey School Board. So at the next uh, uh, delegate assembly, that it will be adopted by the by the the assembly. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Good. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you have any questions for Mr. No, Nathanson. I just have a correction. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the uh, the, one second. So yeah. we're good to go on that. We'll file that. We are going to go back for a moment to the Education yeah. Committee for an extra. I I'm, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I made a mistake. Uh, so today's attendance also included uh, Mrs. Rogers and uh, <laughs> Mrs. Palowski. So I, 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 I realized that. <laughs> thank you for that. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, next is the Finance Committee report. 
Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, Madam President. Um, we met on this past Tuesday, the 28th. We we're actually supposed to meet a week ago, but uh, it was postponed um, so that our administrators had more time to uh, work and uh, give us a better um, presentation of what needs to be done or what's going, what's going to happen uh, moving forward. So um, in attendance at this meeting, um, yours truly and uh, Dr. Smith or Raj, board member, uh, board president Rogers, Mr. Pulowski, SBA, Superintendent Fetter. Uh, we had a guest, uh, Jill Ot Otnigon, Ot Otitman, um, Supervisor of Transportation, who was able to uh, share uh, information with us uh, on that night. Um, topic was the budget meeting, well, not the budget meeting, it was, um, we, we discussed uh, committee, three different plans regarding the 23-24 budget. Uh, plan details were reviewed by the committee. Um, there was discussion about district impacts. Um, we also focused on operational and personnel cuts, uh, as well as revenue um, generating optimizations and interfund transfers. Um, now, we just heard a presentation from Senator Zwicker as to what is going to happen with the budget moving forward, effective Monday once it's signed into bill. So I don't know if I should read this part. I'm going to leave it out. Um, at our next meeting, we will have better information from the state to determine the best options that have the least impact on student programs moving forward. And that's my report. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Mitchell? No, very good. That report will be filed. Uh, policy Committee, Ms. Karthik. <laughs> Thank you, President Rogers. You're uh, welcome. The Policy Committee met on 28th of March uh, in attendance with myself, uh, Board Member uh, Mike Mitchell, uh, Alicia Khan, the Superintendent, Mr. Feder, uh, Mr. Pulaski. In attendance was also our Director of Transportation, uh, Jill Ottignon. Uh, we reviewed the policy 8600, uh, which included language in the policy that coincides with the statute. Uh, we discussed courtesy busing and its impact on the budget. We also discussed some hazardous routes uh, and the most impacted schools in the district. This policy will be um, on the April 27th board meeting for the first read. Okay. Uh, moving on, we also um, reviewed the policy 5512, which is the HIV policy. Uh, it was reviewed extensively, clarified questions uh, posed by the committee. Uh, we had uh, an extensive discussion about certain clauses. Uh, this policy will be reviewed on April 27th agenda for the first read. So please review the policy and provide uh, any questions that you may have uh, so we can get that answered prior to that meeting. Uh, we also um, discussed 4216 and 5722. Uh, there was no change, uh, and this policy will be on the agenda on the April 22nd as a second read and adoption. Uh, we also received uh, an alert 230, uh, which was sent uh, to the administrators today. Uh, we also received the policy committee has received a, a, a folder with that particular alert. I request the policy committee members to review that uh, before our next policy committee meeting. Uh, the facility use policy will come from the operations committee for a review. So I think that's that's with you guys. Right? Okay, that's all. Very good. Any questions for policy? No? No, Do you have a correction? Okay. <laughs> well, wait a minute. We'll close out policy. <laughs> we'll close out policy and file. Did you have a question? Oh, oh we're not closing out yet, Ms. Carthy. So what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What did you? What was just given to you? This. A policy? The, the policy alert 230. They don't, should mean it. Okay. The next alert. Oh. It's policy alert 230. It comes from Strauss Estimates. Okay. The next batch of policies okay, that okay, the okay. committee will work on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we'll close out policy and file that report. Mr. Mitchell, you had a correction? I made the comment that Jill Achitnan was at our meeting and she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you're in back-to-back -back meetings. You get things <laughs> mixed up, so I apologize for that. No worries. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. We did have back-to-back -back meetings, so yes. we got a little confused. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And um, at this point, there is no negotiations committee report. Are there any liaison reports? Okay. Left? Right? Mr. Mitchell? I would like to... Um, say I attended the um, Crossroads North presentation of uh, Annie 
and it was a tremendous, tremendous success. Oh, yeah. uh, students did a wonderful job. I was supposed to really say this in the last meeting, but I didn't get a chance to. But I am very proud of our, our kids. Um, we should be very, I know we're proud of them. Uh, and we're appreciative of the parents who are at the backbone of what our kids do because they make sure they're where they're supposed to be. And um, they do a tremendous job. And um, last, was it last Friday? Uh, Mrs. Karthik, we attended the uh, Crossroads South presentation of soup. That's right, soup it was last Friday. <laughs> Night of Jazz. <laughs> I've been to so many events, I get them kind of mixed up. But uh, it was another wonderful night of soup. Uh, there were at least six types of soups that were served. And um, dessert, which was brought by the uh, staff. And they were also servers. Uh, they were there to serve. Uh, they did a tremendous job. The students did a tremendous job. Uh, uh, if you closed your eyes and didn't see who was actually performing, you would have thought it was a high school um, group that was performing. Uh, that's just how great they are. And i um, so appreciative of, of them and the leadership um, that's there, the teachers and the administration. And uh, that's all I have to say. Very good. Thank mm -hmm. you. That was very nice. Thank you. Any other updates? Uh, just a quick note that we've held two, Mr. Federer and I attended two PTO meetings on Zoom. Um, Constable and Brunswick Acres, I believe, correct, to give them, provide the PTO members an update on the budget. Um, it was, I believe, Brunswick Acres that had 24 attendees. No, I don't remember. They attendees. were really great. So um, we'll be holding a few more of those Zooms uh, meetings as well. So that was really, that was a very good meeting turnout. Anything else? Good. Okay, so we will move on. Um, next is public comments. On agenda items only, the Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on social matters of community interest. Complete copies of the rules that govern this portion of the meeting are available to the public at the back of the room, or you can obtain an advanced copy by contacting the board office during regular business hours. We reserve the right to limit each speaker to no more than three minutes. Mr. Pulowski will indicate when you have 15 seconds remaining. It is our plan to listen to each member of the public. We will note all questions and comments made. Once all questions and comments from all members of the public are made, the Board of Education will respond if necessary to questions or comments in the most timely and efficient manner available. Please consider not repeating questions or comments made by other members of the public. Uh, the first public comment is for agenda items only, and at this time we have no pre-registered speakers. Are there any audience members who wish to make a public comment? No? Okay, we will move on. Next order of business is old business, and we seeing none, we shall move on to the new business. Seeing none, we shall move on. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It wouldn't be appropriate without a correction. Uh-oh. <clears throat> we actually did um, Constable and Greenbrook oh, PTOs, right. not Brunswick Acres. That. Thank you. Thank you. We got a lot of corrections today. You got all these corrections? I have a correction. Okay. If I don't mention my payroll department, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's right. I have a payroll department that does $87 million <laughs> worth of payroll every year and never gets an audit recommendation. They're amazing people, <laughs> Cheryl and Joanne. Awesome. Very right, very Good nice. job. All right, we got to give them a hand clap. Silly, silly. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Pawlowski. <laughs> I think I pronounced his right name wrong, Pawlowski. Okay, anything else? Okay, good. And one more correction? Oh, oh any more? <laughs> no more corrections. Okay. Next order is the consent agenda by a review by Mr. Pawlowski. All right, everybody. Um, a pretty easygoing consent agenda. We have some financials. We have our bills list. We have a donation from the Brooks Crossing PTO. Uh, we're accepting some 192, 193 funding um, for our, our non-publics in uh, the township. We have an audit report that uh, we have to approve. That was the uh, presentation that Mr. Frieda did. Mm -hmm. So we have to file that with the county. Uh, we have a resolution for a competitive contract for our data warehouse that um, that Resolution, uh, you guys are voting on that tonight. We may not implement it this year, but it will be done uh, as soon as possible and when we see fit. Uh, we have a resolution uh, rejecting um, all proposals for our vending machine uh, RFP that we went out for. 
I uh, gave you an update as to the rationale why uh, we're doing that in the board update. We also have a disposal of property. We're going to get some buses sold to offset our new lease purchase. Our lease purchase pro program and the transportation department is um, doing an amazing job and uh, allowing our, our uh, finances to move with having at this time, after this next lease purchase, we will have no buses that are older than five years. So that's a, a wonderful, um, a wonderful accomplishment. And that project was put in place two years prior to my coming to South Brunswick. Uh, we have some purchase over, we have a purchase over the bid limit for fuel, for, of course, uh, this year. Uh, no way to budget that one, didn't see it coming. Um, we also have uh, our, our calendar for the board meetings an equity uh, statement of assurance of per pupil tuition costs where we noted that a preschool disability part-time uh, tuition rate is excessively high. Um, we will uh, address that with our Department of Education uh, throughout the rest of the year. But we don't, we don't receive any students from, uh, we don't receive students for preschool disabilities part-time. So that number is really not gonna be utilized in any way. Uh, some student field trips. We have HIB reporting. Uh, we have some travel reimbursement, travel expenses, and lastly, we have a sidebar agreement with um, the NJEA and our teachers union for some nursing uh, services. And that is your consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Pulaski. Are there any questions to my right? Very good. To my left. Yep. I have one outstanding question. Sure. Uh, how often do uh, uh, the district purchase fuel? Um, is there a cycle to it? How often? How often do we? How often do we get fuel? Oh, how often do we get fuel? Uh, we monitor. We open up a purchase order in the beginning of the year, and then we monitor that purchase order. So as as when the tanks are getting low, we make a phone call. So it could be monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, depending on how much we use. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions to my left? I just have two. Um, can you just explain? Because you gave it to the board the explanation as to why you rejected the bids for the vending machines. Um, can you just inform the public why we did that? It was because it we was had we had two we had two vendors respond. Uh, we weren't confident in one vendor, and the second vendor uh, did not provide um, a lot of the information that was requested in the RFP. Okay. So at this point, we're finding we're going to go at it on our own through Chartwells. We're purchasing the vending machines with our cafeteria account and we'll be able to uh, manage the cafeteria machines either with our Chartwell's personnel or with Raphael's uh, group um, students uh, that can load machines uh, and then kind of work it in-house and keep all of the revenue for ourselves. Great, so that's a little bit of a revenue stream for us. Yes, it will be a small revenue stream Great. for us. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. we have about 22 of them that we're getting ready to uh, put out when when we get there. Okay, yeah, Ms. Ferrer. Mm. Those machines going to be like credit card enabled? Yes. Okay. They'll be credit card, debit card enabled, Thank and you. they'll be connected to our network so we can see and monitor the machines with regards to how much business they're generating. That's good. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Hernandez. Are we buying or leasing those machines? Buying. Okay. So Anybody we else? maintain them then. Yep. Okay. And this, and the students under Raphael mm -hmm. will be <coughs> hopefully able yep. to manage that as yep. a little experience for them, which is you great. Yep. Anything else? I do have one question um, on the, not question, excuse me, on the calendar uh, for this year, um, we are going to have, as a reminder, our May retreat, which is uh, scheduled for Tuesday, May 2nd. So um, please make sure that you have that for this year. But for next year, the 2023 to 2024, um, there's been discussion about not having the retreat in January and more or less for any new board members, if there are any new board members, more of an orientation to allow any questions to be one-on-one -on -one with administration and, and board president. Um, so therefore, I would like to make a recommendation that the board pick a 2024 date in May um, so that we at least can put that on the calendar now. Um, in May, there are only, excuse me, there's two 
major holiday, three major holidays. Uh, one is Cinco de Mayo, but that's May 5th. Uh, Mother's Day is on a Sunday, May 12th. And then, of course, there's May 27th, which is Memorial Day. So I would like to recommend to the board that we choose a date uh, during the week of May 13th to the 17th or May 20th to the 24th, if that is possible to do tonight. Or if you would like, we could do a pick a date for next, next um, board meeting so that that particular retreat date is posted on the board calendar. Does any of you have any comments on that, Mr. Mitchell? Um, why can't we make it retro? So it's the first Tuesday this year in May. Why can't, why can't we make it the first Tuesday in May next year? That's uh, the first I mean, Tuesday would be the 13th. I have my, handy, the 13th? I have my handy dandy calendar. <laughs> May 13th is the first Tuesday. Yeah. Excuse me, May 14th, my apologies. The May Sixth. No, the first. Oh, the first Tuesday? Did yeah. you say or the second? The first Tuesday. First Tuesday is May 7th. Oh, right. boy. Tuesday. Time to go home. May 7th <laughs> is the first Tuesday. Um, the second Tuesday is May 14th. The, uh, because May, and let me just explain why. Okay. If this might be an issue, mm -hmm. is that the uh, May 9th is a board meeting. Not that that should matter, but we would then have a retreat on the 7th. And then two days later would be May 9th, that's which true. is why I chose the yeah, right. second week and the third week. It would be in between mm -hmm. um, the May board meetings. So the May board meetings are May 9th and May 30th. So this way there's two weeks in between. Mr. Okay, so that makes sense. Could I just get clear? I just need some clarity. Are we making a motion to change the calendar that we have on the current agenda, or are we just having a conversation? It's a conversation which may end up being changing, an amendment, yeah. It's changing the item on 1.1, 1. 1, the meeting calendar? No, no, no. We don't necessarily need to make that change tonight. No, it's, uh, it's just an addition meeting. for the it's retreat. It's not a board meeting. Right, it's not a board meeting. No. Well, it is a board meeting. It is a board meeting. It's not the schedule board meeting that we on the agenda. It's the retreat. It's our retreat. It's the retreat. It's a, okay. It is a board meeting, though. It's a public notice right. board yeah, meeting. It's a public notice board yeah. meeting. I have to make <clears> notice. So, so we don't. We can amend it next time, or you want to amend it tonight? I would amend it next time. I would get your calendars all fixed up. And okay. Get a date, and then we'll okay. make a, an amendment to the calendar. That's fine. Yeah. Then I would just ask the board to consider either um, the 16th or the 23rd of May. That's a Thursday in between the two. We won't have to do that tonight, but um, at the next board meeting, if we, I, I could actually send out an email to see which is the best date, and then I can get back to um, Dave and let's Scott if that's okay. It. Let's pick it. None of us know ahead of time a whole year. Why don't we just do it tonight? Then well, then uh, we would have to amend. We can't approve the board calendar then. On the okay. consent Just agenda. Go ahead. Go ahead. So what I would recommend is I'll send out an email. Good. I'll request the 16th or the 23rd of May, and then once we confirm that, I'll get to Dave and Scott on that, and we can amend the board calendar for the next Correct. meeting. Okay. Is that okay with everyone? That works. Yes. Is that good? Yes. You guys okay with that? Excuse me. Yeah. Yes. All right, so just uh, note the 16th or the 23rd, and then we'll amend the calendar so we don't have to change the calendar for the consent agenda tonight or pull it. it. All right, very good. Um, any other comments on the consent agenda? All right, may I have a motion and a second? I'll move it. Mr. Nathanson? Second, Ms. Ferreira. Roll call, please. Uh, here we go, Ms. Julie Ferreira. Mrs. Laura Hernandez. Yes. Mrs. Deepa Karthik. Yes. Mrs. Alicia Khan. Yes. Mr. Roger Krishna is absent. Mr. Mike Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Barry Nathanson. Yes. Dr. Smith of Raj. Yes. Mrs. Lisa Rogers. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, just a few reminders. The next scheduled Board of Ed meeting is set for Thursday, April 27th. And on behalf of the South Brunswick Board of Education, we would like to wish all we're celebrating a happy Passover, Easter, and Ramadan, and wishing you all a very restful spring break. May I have a motion and a second to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Mitchell? Second? Hernandez. Second. Mr. Hernandez. <laughs> Thank you. Hearing no objection. Yes, I'm sorry. Happy Ram Navami too. Today is one of the Hindu holidays. Oh, what is it? Say it louder because I can't hear you. <laughs> happy Ram Navami. Oh, ha happy Ramadan. Yeah, I said that. Here. Ram 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 oh, it's a different one. I'm yeah, sorry. My apologies. <laughs> Very good. Um, hearing no injection, all in favor? I'm sorry. Hold, hold please. Don't most of our meetings include uh, public comment or non-agenda items? Comments. Oh, I did not do a second public comment. Yeah. My apologies. I, I see someone in the audience. I didn't know if that person wanted to speak tonight. So 
Yeah. Okay, hold on. Is there, okay, let me, let me go back to that. I could skip that? All right, I can move on. Thank you. There's no second, there's no um, public comments for the second, um, and there's no comments okay. for second public comment. Matt, nobody in attendance Nobody's here. <laughs> wants to do a second comment. We'll yeah. skip that tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, hearing no objection, all in favor to adjourn. Aye. The meeting is adjourned at, what is that, 8.30? I can't read it. Yes, 8.30. Thank you for attending and have a pleasant evening, South Brunswick.